Hello everyone. Okay, today I'm going to present a quick video for the mini project that we are in discuss. This mini project is actually for the second assignment which is our final assessment for this semester. So today what I'm going to do is actually to automate an Excel or multiple Excel works. So this is actually related to a day-to-day -day task that I have to do at work. So I figured it would be great that if I learn how to actually manipulate the worksheet and also to do a minimum task that has to repeat for daily. So as you can see here, actually I have already arranged the folders so I can show the steps in um, how to replace files and how to move files to another folder and also to update a main file as you can see here. So if we go to the Explorer, here you can see, here is the Excel file that I have already placed in both job and process and we are going to use main worksheet to have all the compilation of the information retrieved from the data. So today's purpose is to actually move a drop file in this folder to process and also using the data in this Excel file called period 6 which is the monthly and departmental sales to update the main file which is here so at the end of the project we can see the duration 6 will, data will actually paste here and then we can refresh the data here to have an updated chart so which is will be very very convenient if we can automate this in our work so what will be additional is I'm adding a scheduler in this program so we don't need to monitor the automation and we can actually set a time for the updates to be available because we all know that like for example at work sometimes um, other departments or other person in charge will actually paste the file in a certain folder and we will have to retrieve it from the folder and paste it in the other folder so if we could automate this it will be very helpful for our job so let's get a quick start so today my Python project actually I'm using PyCharm which is one of the popular platform um, or interpreter for the current Python uh, generation. So we can start by going into a new Python file. I'm going to name it as Excel Automation. Of course, we can name it everything according to our preference. Okay, to do this, we will have to start from importing. We can import uh, an existing module that is already available in Python. Of course, before that, we will have to do some pip install. Um, today, I'm going to use several module internally in Python and also uh, about three external module. So the first one I'm going to use will be import shut. So basically import shuttle, I mean shuttle is a high level file operation. So it will help us in copy or uh, moving files that later we will actually see during the OS module. Um, so both shuttle and OS module will actually be imported. So we can see here we have import shuttle and then we have import OS. And today I'm going to use pandas, which is one of the uh, very good um, external module uh, for data frame. Okay, we will import panda as PD and then Today we will use OpenPyCell as well. So from OpenPyCell import load workbook. And because I would like to time the automation 
in progress so I'm going to import schedule so we could use schedule in Dzango but in this case I'm um, using an internal module from Python so we should import time so later in the code you will see that I will set the time on the screen you will see on the left side I'm already have a browser to show the time I'm using time is website to display so later we are going to see the effect of it so first of all we are going to define job so for this job I will say I will call it Excel job okay so one thing good about PyCharm is it will show uh, error immediately when we actually running that but for now I'm going to ignore this so um, I'm going to put a comment here so uh, we learn from I mean throughout the journey knowing that a good coding should have comments so other people could see what are we doing the coding for so first of all I would like to of course get the list of all the process file in in this folder so get list of all process files so I'm going to name it process files equals to file for file in OS so in here we are calling the path of our process file okay to build a path for the process folder if file and today I'm going to only works with dot xlsx and of course we'll need a process path and then we are going to build a path so os.getcwt so to get the location of the current working directory os.getcwd is what we are going to use and then we will call drop sorry it should be process file and we are going to join it with the pump call above okay let's see what's the problem here okay okay so next we are going to of course to check if there is new files in the drop folder because we would like to move the latest update in the drop folder to the process file and then to also to update the main file okay so we will name this drop files file for file in then we will build a path in here called drop files the same go with this we are going to only work with the xlsx today and then we build a drop path for this as well same command I use with drop
Okay. So if if there is a drop file or there is a new file in the drop folder. We will load it to a data frame, which uh, to which today we are going to use pandas, and prepare for rewrite, which is uh, going to happen in main Excel file. So before this, maybe we can take a look on how the current file actually look like. So you can see that um, in drop file we have this. Uh, main files so what we are we were doing in the code line is we will check if drop file has a file if there is we will process it and paste into here and then we will update the main file in here okay so if there is drop files with indentation to the right data frame equals to pandas we will read the excel in the drop path I make a spelling mistake here okay in the drop path and we will use the sheet name equals to zero by default because the file that I'm using today, I only have one sheet to read. So we will have to find the, the current numbers of entries. In the main file. So data frame in the main file, we will read which the name has to be exactly the same as what we are using here doing the same we call the default value of zero and then we will want to check on the rows in this main file or the data frame in this main file so we are going to use data frame main shape we are calling the default value of 0 next we will load the main workbook this we are going to use Python workbook we are calling it we will define this value And then in open Python for to load workbook we can use WB equals to load workbook and then we will call the workbook name. Okay, I only need one bracket here. And I would like to update shit one. So now we will have to write the new entries from drop file to the main workbook. So in this case, we will use new entries data frame values to this self and for i in new entries and then to the right we append with the value and then of course we have to save in the same workbook that we we just call then this 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 command line will actually save the new data in the main file but we will have to give the new 
data frame a name. Let's read the Excel again. version and new rows because we are adding new rows in the main file so it will give it a new uh, shape Okay, now we would want to we want to check if all rows mm, plus the appended rows equals to total new rows in updated Excel. So if new rows, which is what we have already assigned or name just now current rows plus shape we will use the move command from shuttle into from drop path into process okay we we'll have to include this here and now we can bring the feedback or the return value that we would want to see once the job is processed so let's say drop files process we're using a print function typically in python so we'll say drop file process completed else if there's we will have to prepare for an in case scenario let's say if there's no new file in the drop folder it could be a public holiday or whatnot so we can say no new files in folder now coming to a very important line we will want to schedule this we are going to use schedule say I would like this task to run daily we can use every day and we are going to set a time for it says I'm going to leave this blank, blank for now and then later we are going to take a look at the clock to see how it is in action so we will have to match this with what we have defined at the beginning of the line I call this Excel job so I'm going to end this with Excel job as well let's take a look okay um, well true I'm going to schedule So schedule run pending basically schedule that runs the function periodically uh, predetermined intervals so this is a very um, friendly syntax that we could actually use Wow 
run pending calls for the default scheduler instance and in this case when we use this it's going to run all the task schedule but this will only be um, once so sometimes in a program if we want to delay to have a delay we can add this time sleep uh, let's do uh, because I'm not going to continue further after here this is basically my last line I'm going to say uh, let's put the probably two seconds of interval before the next possible execution so uh, we should leave a, probably a comment here wait for two seconds before next execution but this does this actually doesn't mean that this will actually rerun it after two seconds because we will actually schedule the task with a time value in a while so now um, looking at the time now we are at 0711 let's try 0712 so now if I click on run so now you will see we are waiting and looking at the the time console the time is frame you can see is running at we will have nine second eight second and once the clock hit zero seven twelve we should see something run here okay so there you go drop files process completed now we can check let's take a look on the files that we have just now so we should see okay this is not running um i will have to check the command again which is really normal basically in all the program that we do so okay I realized that I actually have an additional dot here let's remove this so looking at the time now we are at 0716 just now I took a pause to actually understand what went wrong um, we are going to try this again now let's try with 0717 which is in 15 seconds so we should see it works right now let's do a tally check okay let's run this so we should see the effect taken in okay so after two seconds the result output then now let's take a look I'm still seeing this issue okay okay we will try again now this time I'm going to put to 20 So let's see again in 20 seconds. Basically this is very real because throughout the coding usually we could see a lot of trend error but we just had to resolve it seeing what has went wrong. So hopefully this time it works. Two seconds complete. Now let's see. okay now it works you can see drop files folder has been removed so we should see duration 6 period 6 here 
and then if we take a look on the main file now your pen here this this is because when I do my code at current rules plus this data frame it will move what is after um, which have been used so because just now I have made a few trials so you will see um, there are all data pasting here anyway we should usually only see this in here so what we can do is we can manipulate the code around this line to check all rows plus appended rows so we can move using shuttle move and then we can um, actually have the file drop in the new folder so to have what we have what we want to print out so anyway if we do this here so now we refresh look we will have period 6 data in this file basically this is how it should works for the code but of course this code is not very perfect but if anyone who want to use this code we will have to be very careful with here and also usually I made a lot of mistake on indentation and also the 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 path work that we will need exact name for it but usually through um, trying and error and there's some debugging it will be a very good help so so far um, PyCharm actually is one of the um, best interpreter that I think we we could use as a beginner this will be one of the um, good recommendation from online source as well so anyway uh, this is basically all of the data that we have if we would like to start again usually what I will do is I will just move the file back here and then we delete the file and then I can reprocess this and before I forget actually what I did today was I put all the files in the same directory, uh, directory so it is my conveniences in accessing but of course we could actually um, do this using other path works it's just that we will have to link the whole uh, path address in here okay so this could be replaced and then you can put the directory path that you wish to have so basically this is my project thank you so much for your time hope this um actually this this video will actually explain well thank you again